Welcome, Pewter Report readers, viewers, and listeners to a brand new edition of the Pewter Report podcast, energized by Celsius, the official energy drink of PewterReport.com. It is a Thursday edition of the show, and when we all woke up this morning, we did not know that this was going to be the topic we talk about on today's podcast. Defensive accolades are nice, but we all know Antoine Winfield Jr. is the MVP. We got to talk about some big time breaking news for the Buccaneers and in the NFC South. Offensive coordinator Dave Canals is saying, adios, Bucks. He's going to the Carolina Panthers to be their next head coach. This is such big news. This is such a big show for us that we have three people on today's show as we break it all down. I'm your host, Matt Matera. Joined with me is the face that runs the place at PewterReport.com, SR Scott Reynolds, and our fellow colleague at PewterReport.com, Josh Capo. Guys, this is major groundbreaking news. We have discussed it for a little bit, but seeing it actually go down today, earlier this morning slash afternoon, what are your initial reactions? Scott, we'll start with you. Um, I didn't think it would happen. I mean, there's a, certainly a possibility, right, when you get a second interview and you connect some dots with Dan Morgan, the new general manager with the Panthers, having spent eight years with Dave Canales in person, up there watching him in in the, the building, on the practice field. When Dan was in the personnel department with Seattle, it makes sense from that perspective. It also makes sense the fact that Look at the track record, working with quarterbacks like Russell Wilson, his best days in Seattle, and then transitioning to Geno Smith, taking a former journeyman quarterback, making him the comeback player of the year, as well as a pro bowler at age 32. Then you've got the work that he did here in Tampa with Baker Mayfield, essentially mimicking and and doing exactly what he did with Geno Smith in Seattle last year, doing that with Baker Mayfield this year. And they've got a quarterback in Carolina, with talent but needs to be developed also it's interesting to note that bryce young kind of vertically challenged like baker mayfield yeah. like uh russell wilson so canal's system has worked really well in tampa it was a system that works very well for both uh russell wilson and geno smith up there in seattle i think it could work really well for for bryce young my only concern with this for canalis is that owner, David Tepper, has the quickest trigger finger of any NFL owner. And he is one of those guys that, uh, you know, kind of in the class of like a, a, a Bill Gates, a, a Jeff Bezos, that likes to win, be the top dog, um, billionaire that doesn't have a lot of patience. And so we saw that last this year with Frank Reich. And he's fired two head coaches and two interim head coaches in the span of two years. I think for Canales, this is kind of a a no-brainer. There's only 32 of these jobs. Remember, Matt, the the reason when he was asked in uh, in our our post-press conference, sit down with Dave Canales after he got the job, you know, he, he even told us, he's like, yeah, when you get your first offensive coordinator job opportunity, you take it because it might not come around again. I think for Dave, it would have come around. I would have liked to have seen him take a better opportunity. There's just not a lot to work with in Carolina. It's going to require some patience. Maybe Dan Morgan can be the buffer between Canales and Robert, or I should say David Tepper, uh, that that is necessary to allow Dave the time to build the program. I've got no uh, lack of confidence that Dave can do the job. It's just, will he? No, I don't do not want the offensive coordinator job, Luke. <laughs> Scott not on my offense. area of expertise. No, yeah. <laughs> not my area of expertise. But um, but but will but will he, Josh, will he get enough time in Carolina to see this through? Or is he simply just making the team incrementally better? And is he a placeholder and setting the table for the next guy? Um, will he get a time to like see it all the way to fruition. I think that remains to be seen. I think Tepper is becoming acutely aware of his own um, reputation. And I do think that that'll play into how he handles Canales. I think the one thing that maybe isn't getting enough um, play. And first of all, you know, I'm never on these, these uh, mid- midweek um, podcasts and you guys bring me in on the slow news days and it's just frustrating. <laughs> um, 
But no, going back to Canales, I think one of the things that's under discussed right now is the perception across the league, across and you know the NFL world is that th- this is a no hope perspective, and that means that the expectations are very low for Canales. Yeah. There's really no way that I think he comes out of this, even if he gets fired, with anyone thinking any less of him because of it, because everyone's aware of the ownership and the struggles there, the lack yeah. of resources, especially in terms of draft capital. So, I mean, if he even wins, they won, what, two games this year, right? The, the Panthers, mm. I think two and 15. Yeah, two. two and 15, so yeah. He wins four, and he's going to be seen as, you know, the second coming, right? Yeah, yeah. In two to three years, he just gets them to like seven and 10. It's going to be seen as a complete success story, even if Tepper fires him. So I think because the floor is so low on expectation, yeah. there's not a lot. There's almost nothing he can do short of being like um, Urban Meyer. And we all know right. that. <laughs> Urban Meyer. Um, yeah. um, that, that's going to tarnish his reputation across the league. As soon as I heard he was getting the uh, the the first interview, I was like, "Yeah, he's gonna he crushes those interviews." I oh, mean, yeah. he yeah. got he got one chance at an OC, and he nailed the interview to the point where he got the offer. Then nailed the job. He's just he's that eloquent. He's that good at, at communicating. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and sure, there's a little bit in terms of probably very similar to how he got the offensive coordinator job last year. Maybe the the top candidates weren't going to be very high on the gig. Um, yeah. which opened the opportunity for him to get the offer. But it's also a lot to Dave's credit in terms of oh, yeah. how he is in the room and what he's been able to do with this Bucks offense, right? Yeah. yeah. Matt, it, Matt let, let me ask you this, right? Because, uh, you know, we saw this here in Tampa unfold last February when they're looking for an offensive coordinator. Todd Munkin turned the job down. Dan Pitcher yeah. turned the job down, right? Was this a situation where the Carolina Panthers, they had over a dozen interviews, we don't know how many interview candidates turned the Panthers down. It's just a situation where almost like Dave Canales was the last man standing maybe in Tampa for this yeah. job. He might've been that in Carolina for the said coaching job. So that's what I mentioned on yesterday's show. And I hate that I was right about it, but unfortunately <laughs> I kind of spoke it into existence. Like when you hear that Mike Vrabel was interviewing for the Panthers job and a couple of other guys, like yeah. what does Dave Canales have over Mike Vrabel in terms of, except for like his offensive style, what does he have in terms of like resume and experience and all that stuff? Everything points towards a guy like Vrabel and some of the other people that interviewed right. for the Panthers job. So when you talk about the connection that Canales has with the GM for, and a number of people that may have potentially turned down the job, I'm sure the Panthers probably tried to sweeten the deal a little bit. And to your guys' point about how is he going to deal with David Tepper, it's going to be the unstoppable force against the immovable object between the reputation of David Tepper and the undying amount of positivity and upbeat attitude and exuberance yeah. that Dave Canales has. I mean, he swept all of us off our feet when he yeah. first started doing a uh, – a press conference like that. It almost reminds me of the movie Eight Crazy Nights, if you guys have seen it. When you have little Whitey Duvall, who's always so positive and great and happy to be there. And Adam Sandler's character is like, ah, I hate this and I hate you. But eventually, <laughs> being around Whitey Duvall got Adam Sandler on the straight and narrow and got yeah. him better. I think Dave Canales can kind of do that to David Tepper um, a little bit. And yeah, right now, the, the Panthers' offense... Not much to work with, but the Panthers defense is still pretty damn good. I mean, their head coach, the last time he faced his now team, did not score a touchdown against that defense. You got a pretty damn good (laughs) defense and an offense that really cannot go lower to your point, Josh. You bring in a free agent, you tank again for another season and get more, uh, you know, pieces next season when you have those uh, draft picks. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm not saying the Panthers are contending for the NFC South this year, but watch out in like two or three seasons. Canals, canals can bring yeah. it as we saw. Yeah. Josh, let me, let me get your thoughts on two things here, because I just did an interview with a Carolina radio station and, and it, these things popped in my head. Right. Um, number one, Seattle's coaching staff just got fired. Right. So, yeah. So there, there are some familiar faces that are happen to be on the street, almost like Bruce Arians when he came out of retirement. Right. 
uh, Todd Bowles and 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 all of all of his his cast of, of characters from the Cardinals, right, were on the street as well. It was he said the stars aligned, right? That's why he took the job in Tampa. It wasn't just Bruce; it was his entire staff that was kind of reformed here in Tampa. So, so Dave Canales has some trusted, familiar faces that he knows has worked with that are on the street that can help him in Carolina. And then the second thing is, if you're a free agent and you get a phone call from Dave Canales, a video conference call, or maybe you fly up to Carolina or fly down to Carolina. Canales will go to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and you get that FaceTime with Dave. He's so believable, right? And as long as he's got Tepper right in the checks, hey, you want to get paid, you're a free agent. We have the, che- the paycheck for you here. We're building something. You're not going to win maybe in year one, but who's to say you aren't? But we're going to win soon. And he's so believable. I think he is going to be deadly in free agency with his enthusiasm, his charisma, and his believability. Yeah, he he definitely missed an opportunity to go be a college head coach because you know oh. he would have crushed oh. the recruiting dancing trail. in the locker room after right? a big win. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, like that those would have been a lot of five car five star recruits because he's it, it's his eloquence and and just how he sells himself and he really sells an individual on the best version of what they can be and I think that's what he's trying to bring out of everybody. Yeah. Um, Matt, you mentioned the eight crazy nights. I was going to go with more of an NFL reference and um, in terms of like over the recent few years, Ron Rivera trying to bring an air of professionalism and yes. respectability to uh, a Washington franchise that had mm-hmm. a completely derelict. Uh, Uh, owner and for a few years he was able to pull it off yeah you know um so yeah it's it's a huge boon for carolina i would not be one to bet against dave canales just uh, over the last year of covering him watching his offense watching his development he's not somebody who's necessarily going to like immediately be perfect right and if anybody has that kind of expectation of him if anybody had that expectation this year yeah, it's unrealistic. But if you watch the arrow with him in everything that he does, yeah. the arrow continually points in an upward direction. And uh, and that's somebody you definitely want kind of piloting your franchise. Yeah, One of the sure. biggest things I will personally miss about Dave Canales is how much of an advocate he was for the best energy drink around in the That's world, right, Celsius <laughs> energy drinks. I mean, there is a reason why we called him the human Celsius. And I'm going to miss calling him the human Celsius. Yeah, for of sure. course, Celsius, you know, the Bucs need a new offensive coordinator. They're bringing in a new line of play calls. Celsius is bringing in a new line of energy drinks with their Celsius essentials, which are the top performance performance i cannot say that word performance energy drinks around with 270 milligrams of caffeine to help you live fit and of course there's no sugar in these drinks uh the celsius essentials is the ultimate energy drink line by celsius formulated for the fitness enthusiasts looking to elevate their performance they have proprietary i can get that word though Meta Plus formulas with three essential aminos that provides you with an unbeatable combination of ingredients that support your physical and cognitive performance. With a specially formulated lineup of bold flavors, Celsius Essentials is a game changer for those wanting to unlock their full potential and take their fitness journey to the next level. Celsius Essentials are available at 7-Elevens nationwide. You can get the three flavor variety pack of at Walmart, and they are rolling out to nationwide retailers, and soon enough, you can get them over on Amazon. So whether it's the Celsius Essentials or one of the old school flavors, because we like OGs as well, whether it's that sparkling watermelon, Arctic vibe, strawberry lemonade, uh, sparkling orange, the Fuji apple pear, peach mango, you get my point, the sparkling lemon lime as well. They are the best. So if you need to know where to find one, go to the Celsius store locator on their website, punch in your address and tell you the closest location where you can pick one up. Could be a health and fitness store, could be a convenience store, Walmart, Target, 7-Eleven, or the best for last, your bodega. Bodega. Josh, you want to do it? No, I can't. I can't talk. Uh, so all right. Not even to try. 
And if you want to get Celsius in bulk, go over to Amazon, click on the subscribe and save. Get that variety pack because variety is the spice of life. Have it sent to your place of residence whenever you want. You're the captain. You're in charge. Just make sure you're drinking Celsius energy drinks, the official energy drink of PeterReport.com. Got a couple Gen of us. Gentlemen, chat. hold on yeah. a second. I, I, I get it. I got to do I got to do a, a little bit of a mea culpa here. Um, okay. I'm rarely wrong, as you guys know, but it, it does happen from from uh, from occasion to occasion. Um, boy. Uh, SR is fat. <laughs> I saw coach, that earlier offensive today. Offensive <laughs> coordinator and quarterback for 2024. Boy. Uh, yeah, I didn't see this Canales to the Panthers uh, thing coming. Um, and listen, I, I'll say this. I've never called for Todd Bowles to be fired, and and I'm not going to right now. But it's my job to report what I think and what I know. And sometimes what I think comes from what I know, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's my own opinion. But I have to ponder if there is a chain reaction here that is this franchise that had to go through 10 head coaching, I'm sorry, 10 offensive coordinator interviews to get Dave Canales. Do they want to do that again? Or do they want to promote Thad Lewis only to, to have him become a hotshot candidate next year? The problem with defensive-minded head coaches, and I love them because I'm a defensive-minded guy, right? I respect the heck out of Tony Dungy, one of my all-time favorite people and people I've covered. At the same time, this franchise has won two Super Bowls with offensive-minded guys, Gruden and Arians. And I just wonder, it's so much easier in this day and age where the hot, especially young, offensive coordinator candidate is the guy that, that becomes the next head coach. We just saw it today with Dave Canales going to Carolina. <laughs> this is a treadmill that Todd Bowles, Jason Light, and the lasers might be on for some time. It's a hard treadmill to stay on because there's nothing that makes teams championship caliber faster than a really good offensive coordinator and a really good quarterback. And when it's your head coach, you can think of the likes of Drew Brees and Sean Payton come to mind, right? Um, uh, Mike Holmgren and Brett Favre. Bill Walsh and Joe Montana, it goes way back, but even more so in this day and age with the younger guys, the Matt LaFleur is trans transitioning from Aaron Rodgers to Jordan Love and still having success. Well, I just wonder no. if if the Lasers and Jason Light look at this and say Todd Bowles is 17 and 17 as a head coach, and it's taken him week 17 and week, week 18 to win the division, which is a downtrodden NFC South. We know that. And he's one and two in the postseason. And is this the time where we maybe make a run for a guy like Todd Munkin or another offensive minded head coach and get off this treadmill that we're on, where we're on to the third offensive coordinator now in three years from Byron Leftwich to, to Dave, Dave Canales to the next guy, whether it's Thad Lewis or somebody they bring in. Gentlemen, your thoughts on that? Yeah, so I'll build on it, what you're talking about in terms of like um, offensive minded head coaches and the success they're having. Um, if you look throughout the league now, it doesn't even require like the elite quarterback, right? You were, you were mentioning a lot of historical references yeah. where the QB was really, really important. Um, you've got Mike McDaniels getting the most out of Tua Tagovailoa. You've got Kyle Shanahan getting the most out of uh, Brock Purdy. And before yeah. that, um, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, uh, LaFleur is doing it. He had Rogers and, and it does look like Jordan Love's going to be a really um, awesome guy, but but you can see these these schemes are really getting the most out of quarterbacks who you wouldn't necessarily say that's a top five guy. So I think that's big. I, I don't see Bulls getting let go this year. OK, you're right that being a defensive guy, they're going to be on the treadmill. But I didn't see Dave Canals leaving for Carolina either. Man. Yeah. Uh, Josh. Very, very true. Very true. I'm <laughs> not saying it's time. impossible. Yeah. I'm, I'm putting the odds at it, of it extremely low. If for nothing else, that the optics, this is a, a, a head coach who took a team that was expected to be the worst in the NFL by some national pundits and took them to the final. They were technically one of the last, uh, what, six teams, right? Yeah. Just by virtue of the TV schedule last week, right. mm -hmm. but I'm going to go with it, right? One of the final six teams yeah. in the yeah. league. Um, it, that's a that's a tough one to explain, right? That, that we're getting rid of him. 
Um, from a process standpoint, I do. I was just here I when think- Tony Dungy got fired after becoming the Bucks' all-time winningest head coach. Three straight playoff appearances, four out of the last five years of playoff but appearances. When he got fired, at that point, he was underperforming expectations. The expectation was the Super Bowl, yeah. right? Todd Bowles expectation was, can he even get to the playoffs? He got there. He won a game and he was competitive against a very, very good Lions team. They were in it to the last drive. So for me, I just, I I see it being low. And then the other thing with regards to like, yes, this will be the third coordinator in, in three years, but where we're at on the treadmill is you're losing a coordinator for a very good reason because your team's doing well. And I think that earns him the right to try and nail the next hire. Yeah, we've seen with Mike Rabel, like you can get a couple of them, but eventually you get it wrong. And I think right. that's where Todd Bowles potentially ends up getting exited from one buck place. That's that's still a ways down. He's still got the opportunity to get this higher. Right. I think there's a very good internal option. I think that there's a lot of interesting names externally. I think he has the opportunity to get that right. And even in a scheme that can continue to progress his, his quarterback. So I think there are opportunities still for silver linings for Bucks fans. But yeah, he's basically going to have to go, you know, 100% on all of his OC hires from here on out. Mm-hmm. And that is a, a difficult task to. Uh, yeah. That's, to that's, that's where I'm at with it, Josh. Like I don't think Todd Bowles should get penalized for losing Dave Canales. If anything, it's like, Hey Todd, you brought this guy in two thumbs up for you for improving the team. And then, Canals, at least in the eyes of the Panthers, did so good that they wanted him to be the head coach. I don't see why he should get fired for that. It's like Dan Campbell's not going to get penalized when Ben Johnson gets hired as a head coach or Aaron Glenn gets hired as a head coach. And They had a much better record, so it's a little different there. But, yeah, I think Bowles has at least earned the right to go out and search for that next offensive coordinator. And, yes, three coordinators in three years, but the first one, uh, the first one it's like, okay – now I need to make a change. The second one, the change was so good that uh, Canals in his own right got a, a, an upgrade because of it and a benefit because of it. So, yeah, eventually it may fall out, but you just hope that it's way further down the road. And I'm sure Bowles isn't flattered with the idea of having to go through this entire process again with interviewing people and, and, uh, and, and how all that stuff goes down, especially when... It, it kind of feels a little bit like you're back to square one with, okay, well, how does this offense look? And the, the only answer we do have is there is a path of success for this team in the post Tom Brady era, because they did it with Baker Mayfield. So I think that is a good sign where you probably get even more qualified candidates this time around. And maybe not as many people turn it down because they saw what canals did with Baker and Mike Evans and all those guys. But uh, we'll talk about a couple of different uh possibilities and especially some of the in-house guys but we got some super chats to get to as well and these people have been kind enough to be to be waiting from the beginning of the show so let's start out with kyle miller thanks for the 499 super chat who says while this stings the silver lining is that the entire nfc south has coaching turnover slash rebuild next season division is still wide open yeah, I, it, it's certainly the case. I think as long as Baker Mayfield comes back, right, That that's the thing. And I think if you're a Buccaneer fan, the great thing about this is, is Carolina has their quarterback in Bryce Young, right? He's not luring Baker Mayfield to Carolina. And, and I don't think that Mike Evans wants to end his career in Carolina catching passes from a, a, a quarterback that he's never caught passes from in Bryce Young just because he thrived in Dave Canales' system. Dave Canales' system can live on here, there are a couple of in-house guys. I, th- I think we should talk about him now, right? Thad Lewis yeah. is certainly yep. one of those those guys that that is um, very very well thought of by Todd Bowles. He was promoted essentially from assistant receivers coach to quarterbacks coach last year. Did a great job with Baker Mayfield, and th- I, I think too when you look at at Thad, he is a player that that really has a lot of. Um, a lot of things going for him in terms of being able to um, talk the the talk because he was himself a, a former quarterback in this league. He's got experience doing it. But the downside is, is you're going from one guy in Dave Canales that, n- that did not have any play calling experience to another. Right. Yeah. That's that, <gasps> that's a little bit of, of a concern there, perhaps. 
but he does have play calling experience. At least one play. <laughs> one play that I'm I'm aware that that I'm 100 percent aware that of. That was a suggestion. That wasn't a play call. That was oh, that was in the headset. Enough. Dave's the play caller. So fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. You're right. I'm wrong. So, but uh, just just to kind of uh, build off of what I said, so people understand. Um, so Thad Lewis, uh, when the Bucks were in Atlanta, uh, I can't remember what what week it was. Uh, the screen to Rashad White that he ended up yeah. scoring on that was a Thad Lewis suggestion, uh, and it was uh, caught perfectly by the Bucks' um, own digital team on their show, The Current. Yeah, uh, we got a super chat from Bucks Basement. Thanks for the nine ninety nine super chat. Bucks baseman who says losing canals is just another sign that defensive uh, head coaches do not work in today's NFL. Say Bowles finds the right hire again, we will just get poached next offseason. Fire Bowles and get Todd Munkin, who will be calling plays for the Ravens this Sunday in the AFC Championship game. Yeah, it is a little bit of a vicious cycle with defensive head coaches, and there's not really a solution unless that head coach wants to learn how to call plays. I, the one thing, and, and I totally understand this, and, and in the totality, this isn't the wrong mindset in terms of a good offensive coordinator will get their shot, but it's not going to be every season. Yeah. All right. And, and I'll, I'll kind of paint a picture for you. So Canales came from Shane Waldron. Shane Waldron has been a, a very successful offensive coordinator yep. in the NFL for multiple seasons. His offense in Seattle was actually better than the Bucks' offense this past season. Mm -hmm. And Waldron three years as OC in Seattle, despite, you know, a lot of the good things being said about him. And after Pete Carroll was let go in Seattle, they didn't promote Waldron and he went and got another OC gig in yeah. Chicago. So it's not every season. Yes. Right. You want it, it with bowls at the helm. You do want him to find successful offensive coordinators. Yes. Those guys will go. It's not going to be every single season. Like, and bowls needs to get his credit and I'm going to give it to him. He helped develop Dave Canales into a guy who got yeah. a head coaching coach, uh, head coaching gig. Um, Canales is giving credit to Bowles as well as Pete Carroll, but especially Bowles for giving him that shot. And I think that's something that needs to be um, kind of put out there that this is a credit to Todd Bowles as well. Like this should be a feather in his cap. He should receive some positive credit for this. Yeah. And, and Todd I, Bowles I, coaching tree. Yeah. He's got exactly. one. Exactly. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, I, I think the thing too, when you look at at um, at Thad Lewis, is uh, he allows the Buccaneers to do a couple things, right? Um, they're still the front runner to re-sign Baker Mayfield. Why? Because Baker Mayfield was in that quarterback meeting room with Thad Lewis every day. They've got a great rapport. Thad has a great reputation in, in the building. Myself and, and Adam Slavon, we contacted a couple Buccaneer players today. Luke Gedeke, I put the story in the chat. Luke Gedeke, Chase Edmonds. And Devin Tompkins, who played wide receiver as a rookie under Thad Lewis, who was the assistant receivers coach in 2022. And all of them spoke very, very highly of him. He's he's a bright young uh, mind. That's probably why the Raiders wanted to interview him for, for their uh, vacant offensive coordinator job. So there might be some competition for Lewis. Or this team might go outside the organization and do some interviews, which it probably will, uh, is my guess. And, you know, the interesting thing is the timing of all of this is really kind of wild because you probably have heard we're going to be in Mobile, Alabama next week. And we're going to be looking at some Bucks Senior Bowl targets on our Senior Bowl preview show Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Well, the other thing is the Senior Bowl is known as the NFL Job Fair. That's mm -hmm. where basically everybody employed and unemployed descends on Mobile, Alabama to either scout prospects or, or look for different jobs and so jason light will be there todd Bowles will be there probably doing double duty looking at some of the players and and tampa bay has drafted in each of the last two drafts five players each from the last two senior bowls including the likes of servasia dennis yaya diaby cody malk uh Payne durham last year so they might be doing some Double duty, looking at players, also looking at potential offensive coordinator candidates. And if, if Brad Idzik, if he ends up going to to Carolina, which that might be a possibility. I know Brad just got engaged. He his did. fiance, you know, it, it, she might have some Tampa roots. I know his parents live here. He likes this area. That it's just awesome. a matter of, of is he going to get 
that offensive coordinator title up there and, and a, certainly a, a pay raise by going to Carolina with his very good friend, Dave Canales, or is he going to stay here as the wide receivers coach and maybe get some consideration for, for being a play caller uh, and filling the Dave Canales uh, vacancy here? What do you think guys? Yeah, I think it's kind of interesting because there is the one side of it of, you know, Canales, I mean, Canales is living in Isaac's house for a little bit when when they all first moved to Tampa and he's still trying to get his own home. There is the comfort of like, all right, this is kind of a little bit of a tag team, a little bit of a Ricky Bobby and Cal Naughton shake and bake type of situation. (laughs) But but hear me out. What if Isaac is kind of can use that as something he has in his back pocket? Like, oh, if all else fails, I can go to Carolina. What if he wants to? kind of spread his wings a little bit more and say, hey, I can prove this on my own without Dave Canales. I can either interview for the Bucks' offensive coordinator job, and it's him against that Lewis in-house for that job, or I can continue to build something here, build my resume coaching, hopefully Mike Evans for another couple of years, and then get my shot somewhere else or in a different situation. I still, if I was a betting man, which I am, I would put money on Canales hiring Brad Isaac. But I, I do think there is something to ponder about kind of attempting to do it on your own and, and seeing what you can do in that situation. Yeah. Uh, he, here's here's one thing real quick. I just want to address this. Canales is a turncoat. Man, no, you, you cannot blame a guy what? for for taking a promotion with that comes with a pay raise, by the way. Right. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there are 32 of these head coaching jobs. Um, the vast majority of NFL assistants do not get head coaching interviews, much less opportunities. So yeah. you've got to take these opportunities when they come. You cannot fault Dave Canales, even if it's going to a division rival. He is an, an A-plus human being. Great person. So, uh, uh, listen, I mean, he got emotional. He got emotional at the podium like I a know. couple of weeks ago. I can tell you, those were not crocodile tears. That yeah. was not like <laughs> I'm yeah. on my way out and I'm just trying you're to. In, you're if, entitled if to were, your opinion, Peter people. If but they were, Dave Canal should be at the Academy Awards in right. Bingo. Yeah. when yep. they go on or whenever they come out. Yeah, Matt, I did like your uh, your reference there in terms of him spreading his his wings. I would yeah, say. he's a peacock. So, you got to let him fly. You can try to make I was, any movie references. I love your movie references today. See, today I, I was thinking more like a Steve guys. Miller band reference there. Okay. You know, fly like an eagle to the yeah. sea. Like yeah. so, he's going to the eagle cover. He's going yeah. to be the eagle. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think about it that way. Dang it! Should have held that one for another day. Um, yeah, I I think. It's a better than 50% chance to stay here in Tampa Bay. I think Thad Lewis may actually have a better shot at moving with uh, Canales to Carolina. And it could shake out where if the Bucks do go internal, maybe it, it's it's Idzik who moves up into that offensive coordinator spot because he does want to stay and there's continuity of the system. And I think there are a lot of similarities between Canales and Idzig in terms of how they operate. And I think the offensive room may enjoy that. Um, and then that actually moves with uh, Canales to be his OC in Carolina. Oh. So it'll be an interesting way that to see how it shakes out. Yeah, that'd be a Game be. of Thrones like twist. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we got a five dollar super chat from Meets McGee. Thank you, Meets, who says Thad Lewis is the only choice. Towards the end of the season, he got some play calling experience. I do see him keeping the same playbook and tweaking it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's an advantage, right? It's not like Dave Canales takes the system with him. I mean, the Bucks have the playbook downloaded on their yeah on on their iPads. It, it's in the system, so Tampa Bay can very well keep this system and just have an in-house candidate pull the trigger, whether it is a Thad Lewis or a Brad Edzik, uh, or they can go outside and 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 try something else, right? I mean, uh, they had a lot of success. With a new system this year, there, there's nothing that that would preclude the Buccaneers from from not having success again uh, next year. It just it typically is a slow burn and slow learn, right? I mean, you, you look at the struggles the Bucks offense had at the beginning compared to how they were putting up points at the end of the season. And you know, do you want to do that to Baker Mayfield? I mean, the guys had more more play callers <laughs> and systems and head coaches. And he finally about finds... continuity, stability. Yeah. That's all that Baker wanted. Yeah. <laughs> and he still doesn't yeah. have it. Go ahead. The, the big thing there though. And, and I think this really needs to be said is 
there's one thing between the system and then the individual running the system. And it's a big difference, right? Oh, yeah. And the bu the Bucks have kind of seen over the last couple of years the bad side and the good side of that, right? So you have Bruce Arians who brings his vertical passing attack to Tampa Bay. It, it's, you know, something new for that offense. It was very, very good the first couple of years. And then Bruce leaves and Byron basically runs it completely back. The lack of creativity to build off of yep. what you already have, right? Yep. The NFL is constantly uh, evolving and you have yep. to evolve with it. You have to build off Bingo. of it. Now, now you take that and you look at Canales who brought Shane Waldron's system from Seattle to Tampa right. Bay. And yes, the, the concepts are the same. But to watch Canales, even even within his own system that he, yeah. you know, he, he's like, I've got Waldron's and I'm going to take 90 percent of that. I'm going to take 10 percent of it because he had a lot of experience in a bunch of other systems, even from week one to week. What was that? 20. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can see he evolved his own system. So it's the creativity of the individual and how they continually evolve their own offense or whatever offense they're employing and build upon it and create counters and looks at different, uh, get to the same concepts out of different looks. That's what makes a truly unique um, offensive mind. And same on the defensive mm -hmm. side. Yeah. You, that's what makes Kyle Shanahan so good. That's what makes Andy Reid so good. The offenses they are running in 2023 are not the same offenses they ran in 2020. That's right. Not the same offenses they ran in 2017. All of those offenses were some of the best in the NFL, but they continually evolved. So it's not just about this person was with was in this offense, therefore we can expect the same success. Yeah. It's how do they evolve that offense? Yeah. And the thing that I like about Thad Lewis is there's the exposure to both of those systems. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he can marry what worked for Mike really well under the Arians offense. Let's make sure we're using that. What worked exactly. for Mike really well under Dave's system? Now, let how do we bring those together? How do we build off of that? That's right. No, that's a great point. Absolutely. Uh, the Buck Standard, thanks for the $5 Super Chat, says, I know Baker loves Tampa, and Tampa loves him, but he needs to tell his agent to get him to Minnesota. O'Connell, JJ, Justin Jefferson, of course, Addison, yep. Ozzy Osbourne, just kidding, um, TJ, solid defense. You know what, the Buck Standard? Not, not terrible. Not, uh, not, not too. Uh, obviously, Bucks fans don't want to hear that. But I, I think Minnesota obviously would want Kirk Cousins back first if, if Cousins can get fully healed. But Baker to Minnesota kind of makes sense, does it not? Yeah, I, I think the thing too that you have to really consider, and this goes back to um, the the genius um, headline that I, I came up with here, which was cool. <laughs> Bucks have their head coach, offensive coordinator, and quarterback for 2024. Well, that that's already, you know, two for three right now. And I think the wild card in all this when it comes to Baker Mayfield is the Buccaneers have a number in mind. And Mike Greenberg, the Bucks assistant general manager, capologist, cap Jedi, whatever you want to call him, he's the best in the business. But he and Jason Light, they do – put values on particular players, free agents and other teams on their own free agents, et cetera. And they don't cross those lines and all it takes in free agency. And I've seen it in Tampa and I've seen it around the league is one team to go a little crazy, go a little haywire and, and come in with an offer out of left field. And then, then it becomes a, wow, what do we do? Right. And I'm not saying Baker Mayfield's leaving. I'm not saying he's going to Minnesota, but if, if a team comes in at say, we want Baker and we'll pay him 32, $35 million a year. Okay. That's different than $25 million a year. That's different than $26 million a year. Right. So um, there comes a number where the Buccaneers with Baker Mayfield, they're, they're not going to match it. And all it takes is one team. So keep that in mind. I'm about to go from two out of three to one out of three. And if this team loses Canales and Baker Mayfield this offseason, uh, God help Todd Bowles next year. And, um, and then Bowles goes, you know what? All that retirement talk at the end exactly. of the year, like, I'm just going to retire. Exactly. <laughs> and I, I'm going to I'm gonna turn this over to Casey Rogers. Casey, yeah. you're the head coach now. Then all the Buccaneer fans run. Bowles and Arians. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know, but I'm just saying there, there is there, – there, there is a chance because free agency is a two-way street. You let the guy hit the market, 
um, and you say, yeah, go find your number, bring it back and we'll talk and we will we'll match it. Well, not at, not if it's out of the bucks budget. So yeah, what's interesting there is whether those players get to free agency, uh, you know, one note that that has been out there and I, uh, I wanted to address it. The Bucks have an opportunity to reduce the cap hits even further of a Mike Evans, a Levante yeah. David, and yes. a, um, a Baker Mayfield if they can get a, a deal done by, I think it's February 19th. Yeah. That's when their contracts technically void and where the void money that's set in 2024 and, uh, and really beyond 2024 mm -hmm. all accelerates into a dead cap hit from their current contracts. If they can get a deal done with any or all of those players before the February 19th, which is well before free agency, well before the tampering period where those players can technically um, talk to other clubs, then the new contract would allow them to keep those dead cap hits in yeah. those individual years. It helps them on the 2024 cap. So yeah. um, that'll be an interesting kind of development. Do they decide to just proactively get those contracts done mm -hmm. before yeah. free agency hits. Don't let those players necessarily find out what another team might, might, um, if my memory uh, serves, Josh, and you, you probably know this. Didn't they, they obviously allowed some dead cap money to hit with, co with the contracts of Will Golston and Labonte this past yep. year. Right. So they, they, those, they, they've gone that route before. Yeah. It's without seeing the individual contracts, it's very difficult for me to be able to comment on, on specific ones like there was gronks a few years ago right. the language was written where they couldn't do that right mm -hmm. it, it it there was no way for them to get a new deal done and still place hold the old dead money so it all depends on the individual contract i want to say with golston's they weren't able to um yeah. i could be wrong on that one so it all depends on the individual ones but uh greg almond of fox sports who's fantastic yeah. he he uh confirmed that I want to be with all, I want to say with all three of those players. Um, well, that was a weird slip. Uh, with all of those three, all three of those players, they have the opportunity to do that. With someone like Mike Evans, I think Mike's just got his number. And if the Bucks are willing to hit that number, mm -hmm. um, that's it. He doesn't need yeah. to hear from another team. Baker's a more interesting case because Baker's had to do the prove it deal. So at this point, there is an onus for him to say, what is my value and how close to max value can I get when I factor in some of the other things? Yeah. I, I want to address something real quick here. Y'all need to stop the madness, please. <laughs> if you've watched this show, if you know me, I mean, I even, I even like self proclaim. He hates I'm offense. De I'm defensive minded. Yeah. If okay. Anything, like, you like should my, go for my the roots, defensive coordinator job. Yeah, my, my roots are on defense. I played defense in high school in my two like really crappy, mediocre, actually less than mediocre years of playing football. And I was a damn good pop Warner defensive coordinator uh and defensive line coach, but I, I hate offense. I even say this up in the press box. I mean, I like when the Bucks score points, but it's like you know, you give me a safety or a pick six, and I mean that makes my day. So um, yeah, um, stop with the whole no nonsense about, about offense. Uh, give it to Matt Matera, give it to, to Josh Cabo, give it to Bailey special Adams teams coordinator yeah, for me. I was, I was gonna true. say, what about what about special teams? Would you would you go there? You infamous, infamously blocked a punt. Um, I did, I did so. Special punt. teams could, could I, I've got the crooked things. finger to, to, yeah. to prove it right there. See, if it I was coaching it doesn't that go punter, anymore. lead by if example, I was, <laughs> if I was coaching that punter, <laughs> you never would have blocked that punt. Uh, true. Yes, exactly. I would have just gone for it on fourth down every time. I didn't even um, have to do anything. It was like a bad blocking scheme. It like the parted like the Red Sea, and I was just Moses going to block the punt. So, uh, thank you to Kelly Dwight Fields for the dollar ninety nine super chat that says Bucks hire Todd Munkin. Yes. Uh yeah. I, mean, I think a lot of people like that. Todd Munkin will be playing or will be coaching uh, his players for the Ravens on yeah. Sunday in the AFC Championship game. Maybe you want to pick some of Todd Munkin's players in Underdog Fantasy. Sign up, get their app using the promo code Pewter, that's P-E-W-T-E-R, and get a first deposit bonus when you do. You're picking higher or lower on a number of different stats. Could be rushing yards, maybe for Lamar Jackson, passing yards, maybe for Lamar Jackson, defensive stats uh, as well. Pick anywhere from two to five players, one from each team. Win up to 20 times your money over at Underdog Fantasy. The cool thing as well is... You can do it for all the different sports, too. It doesn't just have to be football, and sadly, football season is winding down. So uh, check it out for all the different sports out there. Underdog Fantasy, 
Use that promo code Pewter. That's P E W T E R. Let's keep these super chats rolling in because you guys are here. We, we have oh, Walsh, Bailey. Bailey. Bailey Adams is Stop turning. Presses Bailey. Bailey's he's turning the down the offensive coordinator position, so okay. he's holding out for other opportunities. So there we go. And Sly is waiting for the uh, Packers job. Uh, <laughs> thank you to Suzanne Galasso for the dollar ninety nine super chat. Appreciate you. Move on to uh, Kathy Gillespie. Thanks for the five dollar super chat. Who says thanks for the link about canals and bake. Just sucks that this kid can't catch any stability. Interest for coordinator that won't derail Baker. Yeah, this top, poor Baker. Like, finally finds a good system, right? We have some breaking news. The Atlanta Falcons will hire Raheem Morris as their next head coach. Raheem was the, <gasps> for real. Yep, Raheem Morris was. Oh my the goodness! Former, That's awesome. former uh, position coach there. Former coordinator. He was the interim head coach. Actually faced the Buccaneers and lost a game. Um, a great hire by the Falcons. Uh, Raheem Morris, second time around. I think at age 47 is going to be a hell of a lot better than he was at age 33. So now you've got a former Buccaneer uh, head coach coaching the Falcons, a former Bucks offensive coordinator coaching the uh, the Panthers. Now all you need is John Gruden, former yeah former oh. head coach for the Buccaneers, coaching the Saints offense now. He's in, yeah, and, and yo, he's in talks yo, for that. The fans were lied when they say the Bucks run the South. That's right. <laughs> <They're everywhere. laughs> the Bucks do run the South. They're everywhere. You're right. So well said, the, the other interesting thing there, there's only two jobs left, if I remember correctly, right? There's Washington and there's Seattle. Yeah. And Belichick still yeah. hasn't grabbed one. Correct. And Vrabel. Yeah, and Vrabel. And Ben Johnson. Yeah. One one of three very well, qualified and, and, people, and I think Todd to Munkin be... too. Todd Munkin. Well, uh, yes. He, it, Todd Munkin's age, I think, oh. is working against him a little bit. He's fifty-seven, right? So you have to you have to want to and, and appreciate a guy like a Bruce Arians who gets his first head coaching job at age sixty. But the thing with Munkin though is is he's relatable. He just came from college, right? He was at Georgia for three years, dealing with 18, 19, 20, 21 year old kids. So. He can relate. He is a guy that's that's timeless in terms of his communication ability. Uh, I know that that the the young hot shot offensive coordinator is is in vogue right now because of their uh, openness and open minded and creativity and all of that stuff. But uh, Ty Munkin just came from the college ranks where there's a lot more ingenuity and creativity and innovation than there is even at the NFL. And look what he's done in one year in terms of taking this Baltimore offense and and taking it to new heights along with Lamar Jackson's game. So I, I think one of these jobs is going to go to Todd Munkin. We will I can see, see that 1,000%. Thanks to Adam Hamilton for this 1999 Super Chat. You guys have been great with the Super Chats today. Adam says, what do you guys think we do at offensive coordinator? I'd assume it will still be a ball control type safe Defensive friendly scheme. Bulls will sign off on the enemy. <laughs> Eric the enemy spelling would be interesting. Yeah. Question. I'm not a fan of the enemy. I've not heard good things behind the scenes from uh, about him from other coaches in the league and other general managers. That's why it took him so long to get this job in Washington. And he's got kind of an abrasive personality. He is the exact opposite of Dave Canales. He is not an upbeat cheery, positive guy. He is a, I will scream at you and berate you kind of guy from. So Kevin you know, Ross would welcome him. Uh, perhaps. Yes. <laughs> but uh, another uh, guy too, that is out there is, is Kellen Moore. Um, have not heard great things about Kellen Moore either. Uh, you know, he's, he got jettisoned from Dallas. Didn't work. And Dallas out got or, better offensively. I mean, the playoff did. game didn't show it, but they yeah. they improved. Yeah, he, he is in that Byron Leftwich. Like, let's try to score points and use the passing game and ignore the running game. And as long as Todd Bowles is here, that is not what they're looking for. Uh, yeah, Bucks, uh, oh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I was just going to say. I mean, since a couple people, so we've talked about some of the internal candidates in terms of Idzig and um, Thad Lewis. For external candidates, I would be looking at Mark Brunel. He's the quarterback yep. coach for Jerry Goff. He's gotten some of the Goff's best play over these last couple of years. Yep. Zach Robinson, yeah. who was the quarterback coach with Matt Stafford, who yep. Stafford had one of his best seasons this mm -hmm. year. Um, I also like two names from Houston, uh, Gerard Johnson, and who's the quarterback's coach who oversaw C.J. Stroud's 
awesome yep. rookie campaign, as well as Ben McDaniels, who's their wide receivers coach. Um, most people didn't have Houston having a really good wide receiver room this year mm-hmm. at the yeah. on their bingo co- card, and yeah. that room has been stellar. So Just those would be Todd guys Bowles. I'd love to see come in. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> Nico Collins and Tank Dell, and yeah, right? for real. Thanks to Bucks Basement for this four ninety nine super chat. I feel like you're just delaying the inevitable, keeping bowls. Is the goal to win a championship? He is not a winning head coach. He's 17 and 17 for a reason. I do feel like, I mean, if you fired every coach that didn't have immediate success, each team would have like a thousand different coaching moves. Uh, at Bill Belichick point. was a, a losing coach, you know, before he got to New England. So, and- yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, thanks to the Bucks standard for this $20 super chat thoughts. One, what's the vision slash plan for this team and is bowls, the guy for that plan Two, if we let bowls go, would he be a legit head coaching candidate anywhere else? Three, most franchises are reactive. Great franchises are proactive. Okay, I'll start. Uh, Sorry, I was, I was, plan for this I was texting Raheem Morris. I didn't have a chance. <laughs> to, uh, Raheem Morris. I didn't even hear the question. Sorry. No, it's fine. Um, what's the vision plan for this team? And is Bowles the guy? Well, Bowles is the guy for that plan this season, for sure. It, the, I mean, part of the vision is who comes in and becomes that offensive coordinator, because that's a, um, that's a big question for that one. If we let Bowles go, would he be a legit he- head coaching candidate anywhere else? No. I mean, not yeah. this year. Especially I think not you this would. Year. Well, this yeah, year. because most of the the jobs are already done. But in a neutral environment, where if he were let go when all the head coaching vacancies were opened up, he would absolutely get interviews. I have no doubt. Yeah, I think I think he would get interviews. That, but the problem is, in just it kind of to circle back around, like you were you were saying, Josh, like Dave Dave Canales killed the interview. Sure. And I, I don't know that Todd Bowles is going to kill the interview necessarily. And that's a and, fair. Yeah. That's like how much point. did he benefit from just, oh, he's tight with Bruce Arians and became right. head coach. Yeah. I, I mean, I, he would I, I'm, be a I'm not knocking candidate. Todd Bowles. He would be a candidate. Yes. And he would certainly get, certainly get, uh, you know, his, his share of interviews and interest. I, I get all that, but I, I don't, at age 60, I don't see him becoming another head coach. Um, if, if, uh, if he gets let go by Tampa Bay. Yep. Uh, thanks just, to Jonas Correa for the $1.99 super, super chat says Raheem in Atlanta. Yeah, that was the uh, the big breaking news. Yep. Josh, please proceed. Building, well, building off of Raheem in Atlanta, just – all right, so we just talked about I, – I brought up Zach Robinson as a potential uh, offensive coordinator candidate for the Bucks. He's probably going to get a look with Atlanta because he worked in with the Rams with Raheem yep. Morris. Mm-hmm. Uh, Atlanta needs a quarterback. You know who else worked with in, in the L.A. with Raheem Morris? Baker Mayfield. Ah. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Damn. Could you imagine? Baker yep. goes to Atlanta. Oh. Steals Baker Mayfield away from. Tampa My head Bay. is spinning. So let's keep these super chats going. Yeah. Thanks to Adam Hamilton for this nine ninety nine super chat. Who says, "I personally think it's a bad hire by Carolina. I like Canales, but I think he gets too much credit for Mayfield, who isn't as bad as people say he is." Dot, Mayfield, Geno Smith. Russ Wilson. It's not yeah. just one guy. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Bucks it's, offense it's, was very inconsistent. Three quarterbacks who he's gotten the best play out of. So yeah. this isn't like a one and done kind right. of thing. I, I think again, he he kills it in free agency in terms of being believable, selling the vision. As long as Tepper's writing the checks, that's that's all free agents want to hear is what is your plan? Can you articulate that? How do, how am I going to fit in? He will kill that part of it. And then it's how much am I getting paid? And that's where Tepper comes in with the checkbook. So I, I think he's going to have success in Carolina. It just, the big question is how patient is, is David Tepper going to be? Because it is, it, you know, it, the NFL is a, a not for long. That's what the NFL stands for. Not for long. Right. And you only have so much of a window. I mean, we saw uh, urban Meyer flame out. We we've seen Frank Reich get, canned halfway through his first season. I mean, it, it, the patience of some of these owners is ridiculous. And, and it's even more so in Carolina, that's the track record Four head coaches in two years, including two interim head coaches, not a great track record. I I hope Dave Canales has some success personally for him, not necessarily for the Panthers. Um, I know where, where our bread is buttered here with the Buccaneer fans and the pewter people, but 
I'm just saying it's uh and that bleeds it, over with Tepper to his his soccer team too. He has a yeah. soccer team that he owns where he's fired a couple of coaches as well. Yep. Yeah. In short uh, order. Well, this decision would certainly get a lot of people fired from the Todd father. Thanks for the 499 super chat. He says, I'm going to make Matt Patricia, Matt Canada, or Arthur Smith an offer that can't refuse to be my offensive coordinator and fire him back as my new quarterback coach. Oh, hey, boy. you super chat us. We're happy to read, uh, you know, cockamamie statements. But uh, uh, yeah, that's that a recipe that. for disaster. Appreciate it, the Todd father. Yeah. If that is uh, a real name. <laughs> Yeah, Joshua Schaub with a five dollars super chat. Thank you. Says without Canales, maybe a new system. Does a new offensive coordinator risk his career on an inconsistent Baker? Well, Canales so kind of just did. Yeah, well, yeah. If not Baker, then who is what you have to ask yourself? There's really only one very good quarterback who would be on the free agent market potentially in in Kirk Cousins, right? So you've got to hope then that the Bucks can come up with, by my estimate, $40 million a year for Cousins, because that guy does not do anything um, in terms of discounts. His entire career, he has maxed his value. Uh, or now you're trying to get a quarterback with the 26th overall pick, a rookie quarterback with the 26th overall pick, and as an offensive coordinator, you're then tying yourself to that guy because – you're coming into an organization that expects to get back to the playoffs next year because they've, they're now on four straight yeah. years of being in the, the playoffs. The only NFC team that's been to the playoffs each of the last four years. So, so what you're saying here is uh, you don't think if Baker signs somewhere else next season, that it is not indeed Trask time for the box next year. I do not think that it is. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, it's an option. It's it, it's an in-house option. It, We're talking about option. offensive coordinators that are in-house options. It's an uh, option. Thanks to another <laughs> Joshua, but a different last name. A lot of yeah. b- big Josh presence, big Bucks presence in the NFC South, big yeah. Josh presence You're on the welcome. podcast today. Yeah. Uh, thank you to Joshua Finn for this 499 Super Chats. Uh, how about Brian Greasy from the 49ers? Look at what he has done with Brock Purdy. That's yeah, a I great, think, great point. Yeah, Greasy, former quarterback here, helped the Bucs win the NFC South the championship in 2005, got hurt for part of that year, and Chris Sims had to come in and kind of save the day to a degree, but I think got them off to a good start. Um, yeah, Greasy, is, he's a good offensive mind. I mean, he he was he's a quick processor in terms of being a quarterback. That was kind of like his, his hallmark was very smart, intelligent, cerebral guy, and usually those guys – rather than just the guys with the arm talent are the ones that end up making the the best coaches, the gym rats, if you will. And he was more than that. He wasn't a, you know, the starting caliber quarterback for several years. So um, I, I think the Buccaneers, they're going to cast a, a wide net, I believe, I, unless they're just absolutely sold on the idea of keeping the system the same for continuity's sake with the, with the, idea that that might help baker return and mike return in free agency if if that is the strategy i i'm on board with that and i i can get behind that if they want to cast a wider net and look around these were the names that interviewed last time pep hamilton turned the bucks down former texans offensive coordinator but clint kubiak who's the 49ers passing game coordinator interviewed as well as keenan mccardell vikings receivers coach shay tierney the Giants quarterbacks coach, who, by the way, will be one of the coaches at the Senior Bowl, will be there yeah. uh, next week. And Jim Bob Cooter uh, from uh, the Colts. He's the, their offensive coordinator, even though Shane Steichen, uh, Steichen is the play caller. Ronald Curry, still the Saints quarterbacks coach. And he was also a candidate back in February in Tampa Bay. Thomas Brown, was uh, he was a, a – interview twice i believe he and canals were the two players that that were really kind of honed in on scotty montgomery is the lions assistant head coach and running backs coach and those were the players that might get another look-see i know todd munkin and dan pitcher were the other ones pitcher just got promoted to be the offensive coordinator when brian callahan left again uh the the head coach um zach taylor is is the play caller but with Callahan getting uh, the head coaching job in Tennessee, that opens up an opportunity for Dan Pitcher to elevate from quarterbacks coach to offensive coordinator and a pay raise. And then, of course, the other one was Todd Munkin, 
So in essence, if the Buccaneers are going to go kind of down the rabbit hole and explore, maybe moving on from Todd Bowles in the situation, going with an offensive minded head coach, they've already essentially interviewed Munkin because he did interview yeah. with the team back in February. And of course he was on the staff for three years with Dirk Cutter as a receivers coach and a quarterbacks and the offensive coordinator in 2018. So Jason Light knows him. Mike Greenberg knows him. The Lazier certainly know him. So We'll see. This offseason just got a lot wilder, folks. It did. It, it just oh, got a lot wilder in Tampa. Uh, Mike Wells with the last but certainly not least Super Chat. Thanks, Mike, for this $10 Super Chat. Says, Matt Scott and Josh, awesome show so far. Thank if you. Thad Lewis gets moved to offensive coordinator, do you see him bringing a mixture of Canales and Arians' offenses? Yep. Yeah, it, it certainly could be as long as it's as, as long as the running element is not lost, because as long as Todd Bowles is here, he wants more balance. It helps his defense out. Um, and, and that that was that was the constant gripe about Byron Leftwich is he abandoned the run too quickly. Um, it just he I mean, he was a foreign quarterback, so he wanted pass yeah. first offense. And that's kind of how Arians ran it as well. And you know what? That's fine when you have A.B. and Gronk and Mike and Chris. And you got four guys that not that any defense can take away four people. You can take away two guys, right? A great defense can take away three. No defense is taking away four. And that's what worked in 2020 and 2021 when AB was still on the team before he did peace out and before Gronk retired. So um, I, I'm fine with some elements of the Arians offense sticking around. But at the same time, it's antiquated. And like Josh said, you got to evolve. And, and move on. And, and I think that is a bright young mind. So we'll see what happens. Well, we're going to have all of the off season to talk about this. The storylines were already there and they heated up that much more. Of course, a Monday show, we're heading to Mobile, Alabama. The whole Pewter Report crew, including the three of us, um, will be in Mobile all of next week for the Senior Bowl. So Monday show, we're going to preview that with the uh, titled show Bucks Senior Bowl Target. So get ready. We're going to be talking all about the draft, the needs for the Buccaneers, and a lot of uh, fun stuff going into it. And, of course, in the meantime, please follow us on all of our social media on Instagram, Facebook, Threads, and X at Pewter Report. And, of course, our YouTube channel is Pewter Report TV, where we have the show, various clips, various other content over on the YouTube channel, please like and subscribe and leave a comment on this channel as well. That's going to do it for us. Happy Gasparella to everybody for those celebrating this weekend. Yep. And uh, yeah, that's it for SR, for Josh Cabo. I'm Matt Matera saying thanks everybody for watching. And we'll see you on Monday for another edition of the Peter Report podcast. Peace out. Out.